This is the Everyday Hustle Show, where our number one priority is self-development. Each week, we will dive into insightful topics that encourage you to push your thinking beyond average. Smash that subscribe button and tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Everyday Hustle Show. This is the 52nd episode. Wow. And uh, tonight, we got another special guest. Uh, before we get into that, though, we like to do the problem solution. So, Drew, what you got? <clears throat> Hello? Is this thing on? <laughs> All right. So, um, real easy one tonight, fellas. Um, oh, first off, we just got to we gotta give Jesse a yeah. shout out, who's not here with us tonight. Um, obviously, you know, he's in Pennsylvania still with his family for the holidays. So, Jesse, hope you're having a great time. We miss you here. The show's going to go on with or without you, bro. So, you know, just get back. Uh, hurry. Yeah. Hurry up and get back. <laughs> so. All right. So problem solution uh, this week is was, was an easy problem was an easy one this week. Uh, so I was out riding my jet ski just before we are, uh, sat here down to record this um, and uh, was putzing around with a few different things. The surf conditions were incredible, first off. And, um, you know, like it, the ski just wasn't running right. I just couldn't figure out what was the problem was mm-hmm. I knew it was something simple. Um, so I was like, you know what? Screw it. We just, we rode anyway for about 30, 40 minutes and, um, got home once I, you know, cooled off and wasn't so revved up about the surf conditions. I, you know, <laughs> found out that it was a simple little valve that was on the gas tank. I just had it on backwards Ooh. and basically it lets pressure out, but it's not supposed to let air in. Um, and I had it on backwards. So basically there was pressure building up in the tank and it wasn't being released and it was causing um, gas to not get to the carburetors. So wow. like it would go, ah, brah, ah, brah, <laughs> and like fall on his face. So yeah. you know, not really fun to ride a machine like that. But mm. um, so I guess the solution is, you know, a lot of times the answer is right in front of your face and it's usually the thing that you overlook and it's usually a simple answer. Right that you overlook because of your state of mind mm. and that's it dude that's fire right there wow well mine mine was um s- mine was not similar but it was so basically i i explained on last um episode and it was uh you know financial issues and stuff like that and this weekend today actually i got a, a side job and so it was um hanging up putting up two tvs wall hung units or wall hung tvs and so one of them was it was easy. It was simple. They already had an existing bracket. It was simple. I didn't have to do too much. Um, the other one, I you know found the studs, went through the whole process, checked everything out. Found the studs, dude. <laughs> Quadruple check. I love it when I find the studs, bro. <laughs> Quadruple check just to like verify and make sure you know I'm gonna be drilling to this fucking person's house. I mean, not a big deal. But so I drilled into you it. You don't have a stud finder. I do have a stud finder. Okay, I, I wasn't paying attention. No, no, that, I went and bought one. I actually didn't have one, but I went and bought one. Dude, if you didn't have one of those and you call yourself a blue collar guy, we're gonna have some serious I did, issues. I didn't have one until today, so I have one now. But the situation is that I went, you know, I drilled it in, and you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like it went right through, like it was just the, you know, just the sheetrock or whatever, but it it wasn't hard either. It, it like it was kind of smooth when it went in so you know I, I go i put everything on the bracket on and it's not like like it's there you know I, I put the tv up just to make sure it's there it's hanging it's good but you know i i'd finished up everything but i knew like i was turning it you know i, I had my my socket wrench and i was i screwed it in and it was still not tightening all the way so you know i, I you know i did everything I, I cleaned up wrapped up and i left and Dude, it, it was just eating me up. And then actually like probably an hour ago, because this was earlier in the morning, um, I, you know, called her back and I was like, hey, look, like um, I, I'm going to buy some uh, some anchors, you know, because it fit. It's fine. There's nothing, that, you know, it's not r- nothing wrong with it. But I just want I just feel more secure, you know, getting anchors it's not take me long just to go in there, put it in and be done. So I guess the the problem. No, it's not necessarily a problem. It's just like, you know, my, where I want to be at, I want to make sure that the work I'm doing is 100%. Like, no fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, no if ands, or buts about it. And it just, something just didn't feel right as far as, like, when I left. Like I said, I hung it up. I knew that it wasn't like, it's not like it was just going to fucking fall off or nothing like that. But, you know, it, it, it just wasn't like 100%. So, 
it's a little bit more of like me just kind of like wanting to, to make sure it's like a hundred percent. It's my, it might be just me kind of, did old. you not use anchors? No, there was no anchors for it. And, and I didn't see the thing is I didn't have the size of the screw either, which I probably should have. Oh, well, if you're or, going into studs, you don't need it. Yeah, exactly. Anchors. So that's what I'm saying. Like when I, I, tr- so why was it not a hundred? I no. when I screwed it in, it didn't like tighten. So it, it was the screw still, was still spinning. It was still spinning. It was still loose. Fucking this TV is going to fall down. No, no, it, but, it, but no, 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 it wasn't like free spinning, but it was how many of them were spinning. There was only two. It only came with two. It, it's not it's a, heavy, a it's not a heavy TV. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not a heavy TV. But so it okay, wasn't. Okay, so it's it's about work ethic and and you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fine. Uh, I'm sure it's 100 percent fine. It's I just for your peace of mind. Yeah, just for my peace of mind. I just want to make sure because, like, in my mind, I'm like, this fucking TV is gonna fall, even though I know I like you know I checked it, I, I did everything, and and it's gonna be fine. But I just want to make sure. So I, I you know I called her and I'm like, hey, look, like no one like she might be like, oh, this dude might be a little you know whatever. But she was like, oh, you know, thank you, you know, we appreciate it, you know, thanks for thinking of that and like taking the time to like actually call us. And so she was more you know happy about it. So I'm happy about it. Right on. I'm gonna do it. Right on. All right, and then um, we got Giovanni in the house tonight, and I'll go ahead and do his introduction after we uh, go through his problem and solution for the week. All right, so my problem for this week was, um, well, I'm a day trader. I trade Forex. Mm. Um, so the problem that I was running into is taking profits too early, but taking in consideration this month, the holidays. Yeah. You know, so when I looked at the profit, I just took it because I wasn't sure, you know, any big news could just make everything just go the opposite mm. way. So, but... My solution would be to just take things a little slower. Yeah. Um, work on my patience. Because if I would have waited just a little longer, like I would say maybe one or two hours, it meant like two or three times or even quadrupling the profit that I had, you know, running. Yeah. You know? But you could have lost it all too. I could have lost it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Kind of like blackjack. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. a little more you know more well, a little really more secure but so yeah patience is key but risk management is also yeah. very very important yeah so yeah and we're going to get into all that stuff and that's you know part of the reason why I um uh brought you on the show but just I want to I want to tell the listeners how we met cuz I think it's really cool oh, yeah. and like yeah. human interaction is one of those things where it's like kind of like I don't know like the, the older I get, the more comfortable I feel doing it. Yeah. But like if I if you were to tell, you know, like 10 years ago, I couldn't picture me, you know, sitting here. I mean, a month ago, I didn't know Giovanni, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, now we're we're recording an episode of the podcast and we're going to learn from each other, yeah. you know, which right. is like that's like what I love the most about this interaction, how it all started. But anyway, so I um Working in the juice bar, right? And um, I was like, you know what? I want to order some meals. You know, like I want to have them. Me- I've had like meal prep companies. I've ordered ordered from them before, but I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? Like, you know, Frank and I are in here working six or seven days a week. I was like, I want to get three meals a day. You know, have a breakfast for us to split, and then we each have a meal. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I, I hadn't delivered the first one that came. I was like, all right, you know. And this is how I am with people. This this guy and I didn't know that you'd be there every day or yeah. if it would be a different person every day. It was actually the second delivery. Was the, the first second delivery? Frank, yeah. The first was Frank. Frank, yeah. And the second one, I was there and I was like, you know what? F- oh fuck it. I was like, if this guy's gonna be here three or four days a week, I'm gonna make sure that you know he's taken care of and he's mm-hmm. happy and like I'm gonna show him some love, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yo, let me make you a juice. Blah, blah blah. What do you want? You know, it turned out that he liked it, tagged it on Instagram, and then like ever, you know, we kind of just like it just been like one thing after the next now just from that one interaction so i guess the whole point is that like like if you just go the extra mile with people sometimes you you'd be surprised at what the outcome could be right right? you never know so normally yeah you never know normally i would just be like all right thanks dude (laughs) you know have a good fucking day (laughs) but instead i was like yo you know and and like we hit it off and now we're here now Uh, now we're here and um we'll get into some things that we've been doing together um, but, um, just a little bit about Giovanni. So all the listeners, um, know, uh, he's an investor, mentor, entrepreneur, and Forex day trader. 
All right, he's got some background in online marketing and social social media. Um, he calls himself a truth seeker, yeah. which is interesting. Um, and I definitely um, do the same thing, you yeah. know. Um, holistic medicine, he's into holistic medicine. Uh, he's worked for the Hilton Corporation and Waldorf Astoria and also have got a bachelor's in business management and hospitality from FAU, um, which if – our non-Florida listeners don't know what FAU <laughs> is. Uh, that's Florida Atlantic University. One of that's not, it's not a community college, but it's like a local Florida yeah, college. college. But yeah. people also do like travel from around the country to go oh, to yeah. FAU. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it's it's a pretty big school. Um, I think education is a hot topic. You know, we always talk yeah. about education on the show, with no matter who the guest is, because. I love um, hearing people's backgrounds in it, but but we kind of have a plan as to where we're going to navigate the show. Um, so we obviously want to start with you know your first job. So tell us a little bit about the first job, how you transitioned, and um, and kind of what led you up to um, the Hilton, uh, working at the Hilton. Uh, well, I graduated from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Okay, uh, that's in Parkland. Uh, they offered a on-job training, mm. so it was a. a I would go to school half the half day, and the other half day would be to a job. Mm. So my first job was at a German uh, vacuum cleaner company. Uh, they produced a high-tech vacuum cleaner that does not need any filter. Oh, wow. Most traditional vacuums have filters. This one only used water. So after you're done cleaning, you just pour the water down the toilet you know, and just flush it. Um, so after high school, after high school, I didn't do the traditional route. I didn't go to college directly. Mm. Uh, so I continued to work for this German company that produced these high powered, uh, cleaning units that were very, very expensive. They were like $3,000. Wow. Um, so I was working with them and then they, they, they sat me down and said, Hey, Giovanni, like, uh, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> you know? So it's I was a fucking like, question of the year. Yeah, all right. right it's like, what are you doing with yourself? What are you doing with your life? I'm like, well, I'm young and mm. I see where it goes. They're like, are you going to college? Like, what are you it's doing? You were 17, 18. Yeah. I was yeah. 17, 18. I was Who just the fuck knows what they're doing yeah, with their life. When they're it was 17. like the million dollar question. Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know. Right. They're like, well, if you don't at least take a couple of classes, like you can't work here. Really? Like I'm going to fire you. And I'm like, you can't do that. <laughs> they're like, well, you know, we'll cut down your hours or you can work one day a week. And so why, why do you think they were like so big on that? Um, they were German. Mm. So uh, they were very, very intelligent people. They they went to college themselves. So um, it was just college was just very important. Very important. Yeah. They're like, hey, Giovanni, you need to get your education because in America you need to be educated or mm. you're going to be working a job just over broke. Okay. You're going to be just at that level where they want you to be. Right. Because they just want you to stay at that level of knowledge. Just, you know, smart enough to go back and forth to work, but not smart enough to say like, "Hey, that's wrong." Right. So, uh they they fired me mm. because I, I was like, "I'm not going to college." <laughs> Um, so then I got a, I went on Craigslist and I was like, the Hilton was hiring. I was like, okay. So I contacted human resources. Mm -hmm. I got the job right away. It was a part-time position at the front desk answering the phone. So I started off answering phones then because of just like the person that I am just like very helpful, Mm. like when I saw other departments that needed help, I was very quick to put out that fire, help them, and they saw that, and they're like, hmm. The general manager was, like, looking at me. He was like, all right, he's very moldable. Like, he's definitely a hospitality man, you know? Mm. Um, so he gave me the opportunity to, you know, spread my wings at the Hilton. So next minute, I'm... Um, you know, working front desk, helping people with their luggage. The next minute, I'm working at the restaurant, a sous chef, cooking meals. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, From there, I went into working at housekeeping. Mm. I was making beds. It 
I felt like he was grooming me right, to, to become it. a general manager. Yeah. You know, so like I was getting the experience like right out of high school. I was just like, work, 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 work. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, hey, can you do this? I was like, yes. Can you do that? Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. So my closet was filled with like all these different uniforms, like bellman, sous chef, housekeeping, engineering, banquets. Like wow. I did ev almost every position except uh, a human resource position um, at the Hilton. Mm. Now, from that Hilton position... Uh, the, the apex, the top position that I landed was, um, I was head bell captain based on hourly position and not including like being a head department, a specific head department. I was getting the highest hourly rate Wow! as a bell captain plus tips. And then I was able to do everything else on top of that. And that was my base pay. Mm. Um, from there, uh, what happened was there was uh, an identity of a mistaken identity with me. Mm. Now, I was driving a guest uh, with the Hilton van, and I get a radio call from Human Resources. They're like, "Hey, can you um, can you come to my office when you know when you return back on property?" I was like, "Okay." So, I pull up back to the hotel and I walk into housekeeping, not housekeeping, the human resources mm -hmm. office and the door is like slightly cracked and I open it and there was uh, three gentlemen from BSO. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so, all you want to see. <laughs> yeah. It was, I was like, oh, I was like, I didn't do anything wrong. I know 100% like I didn't do anything. So I was like, okay. So they're like, hey, you know, do you have any weapons? I'm like, nope, just mm -hmm. keys and my radio. They're like, take it out, put it down. I'm like, okay. And then they're like, oh, turn around. I'm like, I turn around and then pff, they throw me against the wall, Shh. put cuffs on me. And then they take me out through the like yeah. front desk and like the main lobby. So like it makes a big scene. Right, right. So I get taken down to Broward County here off of uh, Hillsboro and... Um, like just after Dixie, the the local mm. police uh, department. So they put me in a holding cell, and they're like, "You know why you're here?" I was like, "I have no idea. Mm. I'm just like shocked." And like at this point, like I was like 250 pounds. I was like I was like overweight, mm. and like I was on the the ride to the station. Like the cuffs were on so tight, yeah. and I'm just like. You didn't ask him at that point, like, what am I being charged with? <laughs> yeah, no, he, I kept asking. He didn't, he didn't, he's like, we'll talk when we get to the station. I'm like, you can't do this. Man. <laughs> right, right. You got to tell him. Yeah. yeah, but at this point, I'm like young. I'm like, you know, right. you didn't 18, really know. Yeah, 18 you get years scared, old and you I'm get just scared, like, yeah. I know I didn't do anything wrong. So I'm just like. Um, you got nothing to worry about. Yeah. So we go to the station and, and he's like, he has a picture of me. Um, I don't know if I can show you here. Uh, yeah, I got you here. It's a, it's a picture of my ID, and I look nothing like my ID. Yeah. So there was a big picture of my ID. If you guys can go ahead and take a look Let me at see. it. That's the same photo. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, so they they blew up a photo of me, and they oh, said yeah. that uh, um, somebody that looked like me, which at the time did not look like me. <laughs> So they were like, "Yeah, you were tampering with the FPNL uh, electric meter <laughs> over at Tivoli Park," and I'm like, "Uh, no." <laughs> uh, I was like, "On what grounds you have me pulling pulling me away from my job like right, this? Right. You know, making a big scene as if you like murder someone or like something." Like I murdered. <laughs> I was like, I took the picture and I put it side by side. I was like, "Does this look like me? When did they see me do right, it?" Right, right. They're like, "Oh, this was like." three weeks ago i was like this picture like i look nothing like this picture so if you're going based off of this picture mm. like and not my physical appearance like it hasn't changed but like the my id picture has does not yeah. look like me uh so after hours and hours of interrogation they're like just confess say that <laughs> it was you and i'm like confess to what like right. i didn't do anything wrong so then like hours and hours like go by mm. and he was like, all right. He's like, you can go now. <laughs> and I'm just like, really? Yeah. So um, 
I call call my dad to come pick me up, and he's like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "They said that I did something that you know, like they said that they have proof of me doing it. Mm -hmm. There was no proof. They're just going based on the ID picture that looked nothing like me." Um, but I returned to work, and then I was able to work for three more days until they fired me. So, because of that, because, because of, that scene. of that, the because of that scene. Yeah. Now, um, that next step, once I lost my job at the Hilton, I was just like, yeah, like what, what was going through your mind? Well, I had just won the Hilton spirit award, which is uh. the highest <laughs> bro. I have a plaque. Yeah. It is the highest award that any, you know, employee that can get in Hilton. You can look it up, look wow. it up online. They had a big ceremony for me because, um, as a bellman, um, I went into the kitchen and they were having a sewage problem. The water was coming up. So me knowing that there was a dry, uh, dry vacuum, mm -hmm. dry and wet vacuum in the engineering department, um, at the engineering department, um, I, I went and grabbed the, the wet vacuum and I brought it over to the kitchen and I, I stuck the vacuum right where it was like. Yeah. Like all the sewage is coming up because they were about to close down the kitchen. If it wasn't for me, you know, taking action. Right, right. I went from, I went, I used two departments to help one department. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody, everybody was just looking. So based on that and everything else that I did working for that company, um, they, they created and um, not created, but they awarded me this, uh, this award. So I think like, Human resources had some, they were, I don't know if they were envious that, mm. like, I started off as a part-timer and that part-timer in a matter of, like, say, eight, nine months, I became, like... Oh, that quick? Very quick. Oh, shit. Very quick. So, I lost my job there. Like, yeah, I just couldn't yeah. believe it. And I said, hey, it was a mistaken identity. Like, right. nothing was filed. Nothing, nothing, bro. Nothing. I was like, and I go to the police station. I was like, I lost my job because you guys made a mistake. Right, right. Now I can't even go back there because they ordered me to stay away. And I'm like, for what? I'm like, I'm not uh, a bad guy. That's crazy. Yeah. So from there, um, where I lived, I had, um, I was, a, I had access to um, drugs. Mm -hmm. So as a young as a young kid, I always looked at things and see how I could monopolize and make money off of it. Right. Like, I remember in middle school and elementary school, they used to have these little packs of candies where, you know, they would go to donation. Mm. Now, I looked at that. I was like, what if I just go and buy candy myself and just resell it at school? So I started off just thinking entrepreneurially, right. you know, by just selling candy, selling candy. Now, which that led just being able to like wire my mind to mm -hmm. look at things like that. Um, I just used my environment and made it productive. Right. So I knew I could get my hands on um, drugs. Right. So I knew basically a plug, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, to the source of what then led to the apex. Like, you know, for example, um, I don't know if you see the lifetime of a chart of Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency. Yeah. You know, at the peak where it was the most, how much was it? Like 18,000, 19,000. Like yeah, yeah. So like, I would say like the peak of my, my career was as a drug trafficker. Mm. okay and from there that apex was also my downfall just like bitcoin went all the right, way up right. and then what happened it went all the way down you know you get all and then it gets all taken away mm. so from the hilton i transitioned over to uh the distribution of cocaine marijuana um pills and molly mm. ecstasy let me ask you a question about yes, that. Sir. So when you was your mentality at that time, like it was like, oh, the police want to target me as a criminal. Like, fuck it. I'm just going to mm. I'm going to 
really become you a criminal. Guy, you, you're gonna get the bad guy. That, is that is that like where your mind went as, yeah, as I was, a young young teenager? Uh, mm. Yeah, I was at that point. I was just like mistaken identity. Now, like you, you know, what are you gonna yeah. do? Yeah. Right. Um. So I basically became a target mm. in Palm Beach County, specifically Boca Raton, mm. the city of Boca Raton. Uh, I know. When I was taken down, they were telling me, they were like, hey, th- you were a big guy. Like, we were looking for where all this cocaine came from. <laughs> like, they could not figure it out. I had no record, you know, until, like, that that little incident. But the, the police never filed. There was no paperwork on that incident that happened at the Hilton. None. None. Mm. I tried looking for it. There was no, no record. Not even an incident report with my name on it. So, um... I I grew as far as the 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 leverage of the amount that I was moving around and I became pretty popular in the eyes of the law enforcement but they couldn't put a face to it right you know like I was working part time at uh the Waldorf Astoria during the time of my rise mm-hmm. um so I always had a job whether it was part time one two three days because you just you need to have something to occupy your time right right a routine you need to have a routine you can't always be available but you're available when you're available mm. okay um so what happened was when i started working at the hotel at the waldorf astoria um i met this um co-worker of mine and i slowly i let him know about who i really was at the time right so we became really close we became really <clears throat> good friends talking every day, hanging out to the point where like I put him in my circle. Mm. Now, what happened was he was in my circle. He knew almost almost everything about me. So what happened is he's a he's a foreign national. So he's not an American citizen, not American resident. He's a foreign national. He's out in Morocco right now mm. uh, because if he comes back here, he's facing 30 years in prison automatically. So what happened was um, he used to be number two. He was Mm. the number two guy. Um, He was driving one night on uh, Federal Highway. He was very high and drunk. He flipped over his Audi. Oh, shit. Landed into a store, like a convenience store. (laughs) Yeah, he uh, he had about three ounces of cocaine, my cocaine, in his car. Mm. So he was drunk and high, and I rem- I remember he, like, fell off for, like, two weeks. I didn't know where he was. I mm-hmm. called him. I was like, I don't know. Right. Um, so he he gets arrested because the, the ambulance, and they go and flip over the car, and then, like, underneath the driver's seat, they, he had, in his Audi, he had, like, a special compartment mm-hmm. that, like, broke open and the cocaine busted and they're like hey hey (laughs) like we got to call the cops now right right you know so they arrest him and um they basically said like hey where'd you get this or right you know we're gonna send you over there for three ounces yeah you're looking at at least three years right so he gave me up he gave me up um he set me up. In the up. streets, we call that the, a rat, no? Yeah. <laughs> he was a rat. And, and and the ironic thing, this all happened in Boca Raton. Uh, I don't know if you guys know. <laughs> yeah, rat's mouth. The rat's mouth. So that's, this is the ironic. <laughs> Boca Raton. This is the ironic part of. That's, yeah. what, that's what that means? Yeah. Yeah, the mouth of, of a rat. rat. <laughs> <Bro>. <laughs> that's kind of trippy. That's Spanish right there, yeah. bro. Yeah. Um, so then... He gets arrested. I have no idea. He falls off. Two weeks go by, and then he calls me. He's like, hey, hey, hey. I'm like, hey, what's up? Are, are you all right? He's like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. He's like, I got into an accident. I was in the hospital excuse me, for a couple of days, and, you know, like, my mom kept me inside the house, like, in his Moroccan culture. Like, you know, it's like mm-hmm. he still lived with his mom. He was, like, basically, like, a, a prince of, like, in Morocco oh, here. Really? Yeah. He was just like, he's just on a bad streak. Like right, he was right. just like, 
he wanted to do everything to upset his family. Like, right. So, like, he was just a bad kid just because he wanted attention. Mm. Um. So he tells me, he's like, he's like, yeah, no, everything's good now. He's like, I'm about to get a car again. You know, I, I just, that, that car got totaled. And I was like, okay. I was like, oh, I want to, I want to pick up some, some t-shirts. You know, mm. we used to call them t-shirts. One t-shirt, two t-shirts, three t-shirts, a white t-shirt mm. is an ounce of Coke. I was like, oh, I was like, how are you going to get there? You don't have a car. He's like, oh, no, uh, my friend, he'll t- he's he's going to take me right away. He's like, tell me, I'll meet you wherever you are. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, that's that's weird. Usually, like, you know, like, we'd always have to, like, meet. Did you have, like, a gut feeling? I did. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. Um, but I, I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree to it. I was like, okay. I was like, I'll meet you. Uh, mm-hmm. So we met up uh, right near FAU, like right in front of FAU. At the, what is it? There's a, like a Shake Shack. It's yeah, like yeah, a burger, yeah. sh- burger Shack yeah. or something like that. So um, I pull up and then uh, this I see a Honda Civic, like, uh, you know, those college students that have like a barely put together car. It looks right. like it's like falling apart. Um and I see I see him in there and I'm like, okay, that's him. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, so I get out of the car, I have, you know, stuff in my hand. And then I come up to the driver's so- driver's side of the door and he's like, um he's like, Oh, this is my friend. He's like, you know, do you think it'd be cool if he starts picking up from you? And I'm just like, I don't really know him, you know, right, and right. like if I knew that like you were bringing him along, you know, like I wouldn't have done this. But like here, like don't ever do that again. Like yeah. right in front of the guy, and he, and the guy is like, "Hey, you think it's cool if I exchange your number?" I was like, "All right, fine." You know, like you already put me on the spot, right? And that was my that was my mistake. So, and if you would have seen this undercover cop, bro, like he looked like a college student, yeah. and like you would have never known that he was working. They got to be co- smart, man. They got to be smart. <laughs> Unbelievable. From the car that they were using, you would have just been just, I was like, all right, maybe he is a college student, you know? like yeah. yeah. What year was this for time reference for the... Uh, this was in 2000, I would say 2011 mm-hmm. to 2013. Cool. Just a quick question, not to like barge in, but so I know you said that while you're working at the um, Hilton... Wald- Waldorf Astoria. Waldorf Astoria that you were on the rise, right? Yeah. So did you ever like stop and think like maybe this was like a sign, like maybe I should stop fucking around? Like this is like they mistake, they mistook me for someone else. I lost my job. Did you ever think like maybe this is a sign like I should, you know, not keep doing what I'm doing? Of course. I had many gut feelings, but um, I I ignored them at all costs. I ignored them because the money was coming in so fast. Like. That like my feeling like I didn't I didn't feel it like the money took yeah yeah the money <laughs> took over like right. it completely like hypnotized me and I just didn't see nothing like you know I I, I lost respect like right. you know it was it was bad it was bad. All right, so what I want to do I think that's a, a really interesting I didn't know that about you and it's a you know I knew a little bit about you a little bit about that part of your story but not not that much in detail and there are parts of my story mm-hmm. that are extremely similar to that. You know that that it's 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 crazy how similar it is. Um, what I want to do is I want you to tell me like a little bit about what happened after that, and then I want to go into some of this other stuff um, that we have that we want to talk about. So just tell me like I don't know. Tell me what the final outcome of all the legal um, like like tell me fast forward to the tail end of the legal problem. Yeah, like that's what I was about. You're to finishing jump in. up like uh, what, probation or whatever it is. And, and you're transitioning into what? So what happened was um, when they took me in, um, like they didn't even they didn't even say like, hey, snitch or anything like that. Mm. That was not even a fucking option. Excuse my language. But that was not even an option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was not even an option. Yeah. He was like, he's like, got your plug already. You know what I mean? So yeah, like, yeah. you don't even have to say anything. He's like, he's already like, we've been watching him. Like, right. We just had to staple you down too. You know what I mean? Maybe if some of the listeners don't know, the plug is the the source where <laughs> you're getting your drugs yeah. from. So the police said, "We already know where your source so is, and we're already working on them." So yeah. the 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 rat's mouth, you that that, wasn't, <laughs> yeah, that option wasn't. There's no option. There's like okay. I was like I wasn't so even gonna, dry. You're getting yeah, this. Yeah, I was. Is what I was even, is I was even gonna do it. He's like, "You're gonna be in your mid 30s, you know." 
Hmm. And in a prison, I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah. Um, so my first call is was to my ex girlfriend. Um, mm. She basically lined up uh, a high powered attorney. I was like, you know, grab money and give it to the attorney. Get me out. Get me out. Just get me out. Mm. So she sets everything up. Um, I see the judge. The judge releases me on uh, my own reconnaissance OR. Um, so after that happens, um, I basically. I was going to FAU. I had about less than a year to go. Mm. And I basically angled and convinced the, the state prosecutor to basically put my case on hold until I finish. I was like, can you let me just finish what I started, mm. please? Because, you know, if I go in doing three to five and then I come back, I don't know if I'm going to finish. I know that I have the drive to finish college right now. So I get a phone call from the attorney. He's like, he's like, I don't know what you did, but she, she has a heart mm. and she's, she feels for you. She's like, you've never gotten in trouble. She just like, you're a businessman. Right. Just selling the wrong product. Um, so they grant me some time before they can prosecute me. That's how they, that's what they said. Mm -hmm. um, so they gave me time. I graduated. They're like, <clears throat> graduate, bring your certificate to, to court. Show me that you finished. So I did that. I graduated. Um, I got A's all in college. You can, you can look me up and um, I'm on a list. Val, Val, what is it uh, when you get like straight A's? Uh, in college? No, the, uh, no. the dean's list. Dean's list. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the dean's this list. This is 2014. Yes. So almost five years ago. Yeah. Cool. Um, once I show them that, what they said, they're they're not at this time. They're they're not going to uh, charge me. Wow. So right now I have this still floating over my head. They're like, if you get in trouble, right, I'm gonna charge you. You're going to prison for three years. So it's almost worse than probation because right, right. probation ends. <laughs> And you're clear. And you're clear, but no, right now I have this still floating uh, up and over my head. Right. So it's not done because if I get in trouble, they're going to charge me. Right. So they're like, if you're genuinely a good guy, I will never see you here again. So if you've been able to convince me that you're a good guy, mm. you're going to mess up. I know if you're, if you're not genuinely a good guy, you're going to mess up. You're going to drop the ball. I know for sure. And I'll see you here and I'll gladly charge you. Mm. I was like, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So when that, after that happened, um, I got into the tech world. Mm. Um, uh, f what is it called? Uh, call centers. Mm -hmm. Because people could just look me up and Google me and my, f my mugshot was there. Right. So right. even though like I wasn't really charged with anything, I was kind of tainted online. Right. So when I was getting jobs, nobody would, would give me two seconds because they would just Google me or they would run a background and say that like this happened, but like I wasn't prosecuted, but it happened. Right, right. Still they don't care. So it was really hard to get a job, mm. uh, move in anywhere. So like just from that, like it just made things a little more difficult, but it just made me work a little harder to solve right. those problems because... I think God gives us the energy to to those that are able to endure a hard life. Mm. So like he's like, I'm going to throw all these marbles and let's see how you go. And he's laughing. He's seen me go through this. And he's like, all right, what's next? And then, you know, a blessing and then another valley, another peak, another right. valley, and just like the charts. And how long did you do the, the tech for? The tech, I did that for about two years. Okay. Um, I made a lot of money, mm. a lot of money. Um, then I just felt like, you know the industry was just getting played out right. so like it like fizzled you know from like three call centers to two mm. to one to like a little studio and then i completely closed it down completely and then um i just basically 
for about two years after that, I didn't work. I didn't do anything. I just wanted to like, you know how some people say like, I want my calling. Right, right. They're like, what's your calling? And I'm just like, I'm there listening, doing nothing, but just like waiting for like, what should I do? So for two years, so like, did you do, did you have any routine? Did you meditate, read books? What I was doing, I was uh, going to the gym every single day. Um, I actually started, uh, I was driving around for Uber just to, for oh, human okay. contact, yeah. just to listen to people's ideas. Like, and I would interrogate or interview the people that are in the back seat, mm-hmm. and I would be like, "Hey, so how was your day? Where are you going? Oh, how long you've been working at this place?" So I'm right. like getting ideas and like bouncing off. Doesn't Uber background check? Yeah, they do, but uh, at this point. You had nothing on your background. Nothing on my background. So, and they're a massive mm. company in freaking yeah, California this, or whatever. They just they just check was, your background, see nothing, and go, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was lucky to have passed it. I was just like, right. do, 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 do. And they're like, hey, you passed. I was like, oh, I can do something, you know, <laughs> right, to get out yeah, of the house. Right. Yeah. Um, and then um, I, I landed this job at Catered Fit. It's a delivery company for, um, you know, healthy meals. Okay. And that's where I met. Andrew at uh, Juice Revolution delivering, you know, the second meal. Mm-hmm. He was there, and and then from there, um, what would you say? I want to know. Um, yeah, and, and we hit it off, and we got we got into a few different things together. And I want to talk to you about the forex, that because you know in the beginning of the show you mentioned you know day trading, and I don't think people understand what that is. Right. So let's break that down for people, because look, the bottom line is this. Everyone's always looking for ways to make extra money. And everyone knows that in America, it takes a little bit of money to make a little bit of money. And if you have a little bit of money, there are ways that you Mm -hmm. can make money. I mean, I was watching YouTube the other day. Guy just goes and buys cell phones off offer up and Craigslist and sells them on eBay. He makes $2,000 a week. Perfect. You know? So like... There's there's ways that you can make money, extra money. And um, that's what intrigued me about about Forex. And uh, so like we got into it a little bit and you're kind of like, you know, teaching me the ins and outs. So I want you just to tell, you know, someone who and try to explain it in a way that somebody had never heard anything about mm-hmm. it before. How, how would you explain it to someone? What is when you when you hear Forex, when you hear day trading, what is it? Break it down for someone who may not know anything about it. Uh, basically. Forex is just think of it as like a, a marketplace. Mm. You know, you walk into like Publix, for example, and you go to the produce section and you see different items. Same thing with the Forex market. Um, this is a marketplace where we exchange other countries' currency mm. against each other. Um, and basically, we analyze charts and we determine the trend. If it's going up, if it's going down, and based on the trend, we so-called make a like I wouldn't call it a bet, but like an educated uh, bet <laughs> of where the market's going. That's and, terminology, but that's yeah. not really what. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 you're yeah. not really betting unless you don't analyze the charts and you just go ahead and just start a trade just right. out of nowhere. Uh, but before I make any trade, I analyze the market. I look for news. Uh, because all of these things are a major factor in you know what a currency does. Mm. Just this week, we saw things go back and forth, and then you know we thought that we couldn't couldn't get out of the negatives, but we did and closed out in profit. And we still have some trades that were running over the weekend till Monday, and see if we can get them into uh, into the positives. And like I said in the beginning, you know the problem I had this week was taking yeah. profits too early, but then I took an account. The fact that it is a holiday weekend, so you you know when the market provides, right. you go ahead and just take it. You harvest it. That's what I call it. You <laughs> it, harvest. It's crazy because I actually like. I think it maybe it was like a year and a half ago. I told him about it. Yeah, dude, I I hit up Andrew. I'm like, yo, have you heard of Forex? Like, I can't remember who I talked to, but I talked to a friend and he put me on. We were talking earlier onto this like online um, academy. And it, you know, you go through and I, I was like, you can ask Kelly, I was like in it every single day. You know, I went through most of it. I have, I still have a notebook full of notes of like, you know, when you can, like when the markets are open and like, there, I think there's three different markets, something yeah. like that. So like when they're open, you know, when's a better time to trade. But then I don't know what happened. I think at the point where it started talking about like, you know, you got to reach out and get a mentor or like, you know, get in a group. I was like, fuck, I'm like, damn, I got to get in a group. I'm like shit 
and then something happened and I just it was so interesting to me but I I think what what kind of like led me away was just the fact that you have to like it almost made it seem like you have to be awake like non-stop depending on what market you want to trade in but you know currency there's so many different you know ones that you can trade with so that that was kind of like the part um that we, was a little bit weird for me so we call that london session which is okay. 1 a.m to like 7 7 a.m 8 a.m and the the last three days i've been london session hence i look really tired because i haven't really slept i've been up so closing you, profits so you taking off. profits yeah um there's a lot of money to be made and those when everybody normal people are sleeping right like I'll normal ma- americans yeah normal americans yeah. like mm-hmm. In that time frame, I'll make what normal people will make in, in an, I would say, an entire month. Wow. You know, if it's if it's a good time period, like last week was a really good week. Mm. This week was okay. Uh, but normally, you know, just being up for those hours mm. and then not having to do anything, I could just stop right there and just coast. But no, like that's not me. Right. You know? Yeah, because most people that I see, because I, I started like following people on Instagram, you know, Forex traders. And that's their day job. Like they literally don't do anything else besides analyze markets, check all that stuff. And I think that was another part that was kind of like, because, okay, I'm, I'm an HVAC. Um, I, I work in air conditioning. Mm-hmm. So I love my job. I love what I do. So I think another thing for me was like, damn, do I really want to commit to this? Do I really want to like. You got to. That's, that's, that that's, will change yeah. your life. Yeah. When I wasn't doing nothing for two years. I had a demo account and yeah. I was learning, I was learning, 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 you know, before I played. Mm-hmm. I got serious about four months ago. Okay. Four months ago. That's it. Four months ago. But you have to do it. Right. You can't. You have to be in full order, 100%. You, yeah. You, you have to, if you want something else in this hand and you're already holding something, right. it's not possible for right. you to grab that. You need to drop it mm-hmm. and then grab it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what else. a lot of people fail at Forex is because they either get in with real money and lose because they didn't learn. Right. And or they want to like tiptoe in like I was trying to do just like have like one one toe in. You, you right. have to. You will change your life. Like it's it's weird now. Like at when I first started. I used to close out uh, my trades when they hit like $50. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, all right, that's that's good. That's good. <laughs> you know, $50. Then it went to like 75 each trade, then $100. And then it was like 300 1000 3000 five dollars you know, 5000 per trade. And just seeing it like build up to like, like I have no emotion when it comes to trading. Like mm. I can see my account, like was it? Two nights ago, it was like negative 18,000. Most people would have been like, (gasps) me, I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, I just put it away. Like no emotion. Before I was very emotional and emotions will will get you, you know, in the negatives and and lose. So you said you got into it a couple months back and I want to tell you what intrigues me about it, but I want to know how you got into it and... um, you know, like, did you just stumble across it online and then you, you know, took a liking for it and then you, you know, met people or how did you get into it? Um, I was following this gentleman on on Instagram and he, like, was posting all these screenshots yeah. of, like, it was like a 1,000 a day, 1,400. I was like, damn, that's really nice. And then um, all of a sudden, like, he started, he was like, Hey, I'm, if you guys, um, if you guys want, I can start a group. Mm. And if you guys want to join, you know, I'll, I'll get it all set, set up. So he had like a question, like, a like a poll on, on his story. Oh, okay. So, and then after like a lot of people voted like, yeah, let's start a group. Everybody was intrigued that he was making, you know, a thousand, thousand dollars a day, $1,400 a day. And like consistently I was looking and I was like, man, I was like, this guy should have like a group or something. And then it happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so what happened was uh, he released this product. It was an academy. Okay. So it had modules. It was like a learning center. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he had a chat group. So in that chat group, uh, I met my now business partner. His name is Esteban Lopez. Mm-hmm. Um, he was posting screenshots. I shit you not of taking profit between 18,000 to 25,000 in I would tell you like in less than 8 hours 
every day in the chat group and i'm everybody's like they call him the legend the legend the legend i was like of course he's the legend if you're making 25k a day right you know what i mean like but that just means he's betting bigger right of course okay, okay. yeah so then i reached out to him and i was like hey what do i need to do what do i need to pay you to mm. show me what you know like he's like 200 dollars paypal I was like, all right, what's your PayPal? <laughs> Boom. You didn't feel like, you didn't think that he was like, just going to take it? No. Okay. No. That's a risk you got to be willing yeah. to take out Yo, of your life, bro. I was like, that was the best $200. That's yeah. fucking cheap. Yo, $200. And then we started trading side by side. Like, I started off with a $50 account. Uh -huh. And in a matter of two weeks, it was like 2K. From there, I just kept multiplying my account. Mm. And we got really close to the point where like, my, my girl was like, Hey, who are you talking to on the phone on the Telegram? Like all day, she's like all day. She's like, you talk to this guy more than you talk to me. I'm like, he's he's helping me. I'm learning from him. Right. You know what I mean? So, and this was like four months ago, three and a half months ago, and it brings me to this point where like I he basically cloned himself mm. into me. Like everything he knows, I know now. Mm. So like. Like before, like when we discuss what we're going to go ahead and post on our, we have a, a signal group now. So we got into business. Okay. So it start. I started off as his first uh, student. And then from that, we go ahead and, you know, we branched off. Now we have 30 students under. Wow. Yeah. In the chat group where we trained one-on-one -on -one to do what we do. So and that's your, we're, we're learning. That's what I do now. That's yeah. some full-time day trader and and me mentor and teacher and i also do uh automation on social media so i help companies grow their accounts oh really yeah okay oh that's right <laughs> 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 sorry i had like a brain fart there but this fucking guy <laughs> that that's pretty that's pretty interesting though because it's like and for anyone listening like you said andrew people might, might not know day trading is a hundred percent legal like, 100 it's unbelievable right. like all, you're pushing buttons and right. like a calculator and you're multiplying mm -hmm. what you're going to like and that's it you're just pressing buttons because and basically people don't like it boggles me when i show them <laughs> and i tell them it's like if you just listen and right. do exactly i like i tell you like you will see the results like the results are there mm -hmm. so what intrigues me about it is and and i, I don't like numbers i told you that yeah. and you're like bro it's not about <laughs> not even about numbers <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but it's like I see these fucking charts and all this shit. I can't fucking understand. <laughs> and and it, it is really simple. Simple, you know. You, I just, I just do what you tell me to do. And um, throughout that process, I pick things up and I've learned mm -hmm. a little bit about it. And I've done some of my own research um, to know a little bit about it and just to kind of enough to just to just get me by for now. But so like you, you said like staying emotionless in it, and and I, I like that because. Right now, I'm learning on you know on a demo account. Which if anyone wants to, you know, like I, I'll I'll we'll, we'll leave your information in the, in the yeah, show no, description. Course, yeah. or they could reach out to you. Maybe they could join the academy. Whatever it is, but a, a demo account is is you just sign up and it's it's, fa it's fake money. Yeah. So you can basically trade with the fake money, learn. see how the trades work, learn, absorb stuff, and when you're ready to put real money in, you put real money in if you want. But yeah, I like also what you said. About how you know it, it, it's 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 uh you know people just are are lazy if, yeah in this country it's not know? that they're they're really stuck in the matrix like right. the nine to five I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will escape the nine to five to work for myself twenty four hours seven days a week I will go with not no sleep there were days I would stay up for three days mm -hmm. working on myself the development because you have to develop you know your own skills. Because that's you, you get paid on your skills right. and the result. You know what I mean? Everybody's yeah. looking to trade their time for currency. Like, no, you mm. don't do that. Time is the currency. Time is the currency. Yeah. The only thing I really work for, you know, is, is I, to get my money is I exchange other money. Right, money for right. money. <laughs> and I get money. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that, I, didn't mean that, I, I didn't necessarily mean that people are lazy. I guess, I guess what... What there, I'm trying to say, <laughs> some are, I guess. How what, easy, like literally how easy was it? Like just with maybe, the resources that are online, like YouTube, you can learn how to right. do anything off of YouTube, like yeah. learn how to make money. Maybe right. people are scared <laughs> about the risk or maybe people are just stuck. I, yeah, like they're stuck in the just, I, I think, 
you go to college, you get right. a job. You were, you know, I talked to a lot of people who did that and are not happy, but they won't change. Right. You know, or they think it's and too like, good to be true. Yeah. Or and it's you know too what? late. Or it's too yeah, late. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and you know what? Like, we're exposed. You know, like, I love how we talked about your history. If anybody has listened to all of our show, they know that, you know, most of, um, you know, myself and Christian, you know, we're, we're in recovery. And, like, our past and where we are now, um, you know, like, they're, they're two different places. But, um, shit, I fucking lost what I was going to say. Forget what I was, what, my, my, where, where I was going with that. But, um, I guess, oh, is that we, I guess, and you probably have been too, exposed to where people die young. Mm. Yes. Okay, this is where I Especially in the call uh, call center. Yeah. I had at least two or three agents a month that would OD. <laughs> I, I'm not even okay. lying. I would catch them in the bathroom with needles and wow. trying to like wake them up. It, it so this bad. is, that's where, that's where I was going with the whole recovery yeah. thing. Was that like, okay, so we're exposed to like life is short, short right. you know, and like- people die and and young people die young people close to us die um and just people die in general right, you know so right. it's like people are always worried about the little smallest stupidest shit mm -hmm. you know and it's like how long are you gonna live your life being unhappy right you know They're when like and like I, I i can get it you know people might say oh how can you correlate forex day trading with happiness or whatever it's, but it's the freedom that's what right. i'm after not, is the it's, freedom it's, yes you're after the freedom you're after the, the the lifestyle and uh last episode our one year our one year um you know celebration dennis was talking about you know the 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 time and the freedom to be able to create the moments right, right? right. the moments are what we're chasing like you know seeing the sunrise or being in the ocean you know what whatever whatever those moments are to you they're different for every person right. but but situations like this and that's what intrigues me about this is is i can let it run in the background without having to worry about it overnight whatever you know i'm sure once i get a, my obsession with it grows and it's mm. real money it might be different but i like it because i i can do other shit while i'm doing it too. right right you know so like the money could be multiplying and you could be doing something completely fucking not related to it at mm. all you know, like I'm running the juice bar, or I'm doing, you know, photo, video work, whatever it is. And I, I can open up the app like, oh, shit, I'm making money right yeah. now. Yeah. It's fake money, but yeah, I'll, I'll make money. <laughs> like, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it, you know, for a few minutes in each episode as we go along week mm. by week, if ever anyone's interested in it, just so I can kind of, you know. But but I, I think also it scares me, to be honest with you, because it's one of those things. There's so many fucking scams online, mm. right? Yeah. And like, like. Fucking Ty Lopez, get rich quick, drive <laughs> oh, a fucking Lamborghini. Yeah. Yeah, these fake fucking people living these fake lives, you know. And I, I, I don't know why. Just to be completely honest with you, and and to be upfront, is that I kind of like correlate, you know, those two things, like day trading forex, and like you see people driving fancy cars and the Instagram life and all that shit. And I'm sure that there's two different sides to every story, mm -hmm. and and I, I want to taste it for myself and see what it's like, but but. You know, social media always twists the truth about everything. Yeah, everybody. And like sometimes I'll catch myself looking on Instagram on full action and be like, I got to stop because I don't know if this is fucking fake or like right. some of it looks kind of like like one off, you know? Um, basically, when whenever I, I post results, mm -hmm. there's a inside the app, it shows you if you're working on a demo or a real account. So like I... I have to I always slide it over so you can see the real and then my profit margin on the side and you can actually see see like what I'm profiting and it like and I post and I see my following is up to like 20k yeah, yeah on I Instagram um, and it just boggles me that a lot of people are not asking me like hey where can I learn how can right. I learn how do how can I do that and I it just they're just such in a haze or just in a daze where like they're just so they love that routine they just right. love i don't being unhappy or like you just have to visualize it right. and they're visualizing the negative part aspects of life and they need to just take a leap of faith like i did i did not hesitate mm. you can even ask my girlfriend <laughs> yeah i was like i'm sending him 200 dollars. i right. told her i was like i'm sending him 200 dollars right now via paypal she's like okay do it <laughs> yeah. i sent it he's like all right let's get started started trading and 
you know yeah, fast I, forward now we we're teaching other people how to do like he never thought of it i looked at him and i was like let's turn this into right. a, bu- a a business you know what i mean so now we charge uh 300 dollars one-time fee mm. uh for one-on-one chart analysis uh we're gonna start doing you know live um trading sessions okay. where you can see us mark up the charts um but the new year we're gonna go ahead and do a monthly subscription so at the end of uh, this year of 2018 will be the last time you can get in for a one-time payment. Mm. And then the new year, you're going to be paying around $75 a month if you you know, want to continue being in the group. Obviously, the people that have joined, you know, they're grandfathered in, so they don't have to worry about any kind of monthly payment. They're there. Right. So we're, we want to see everybody win. Like, and people, like, they misconceive the fact that like why do you really want to help me like what do you get out of it i just want to show you like you were saying like a taste like i got the recipe man like just follow the (laughs) recipe and like i'll make you bread like i'm telling you i'll make you bread like just follow it like i've been showing you and you're like oh look you know like just be patient sometimes like when i'm mentoring like i it helps me follow what I say. Right. But I'm right. like the advice I'm giving Andrew helps me remember and like I right. use it for myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just to, to touch on that is like, at least for myself, when you're on social media, you see like I've seen so many like pyramid schemes into to, it's all it's mostly all scams right just right believe it and right you'll be the safest un- unless you know like you know, like now you know me personally right. you know like that's but all that's it what is. i'm saying like how you said you know i don't know why people don't just like reach out to me for at least for myself i i know you know f- going through social media and i've like like messaged people i've actually reached out to people and like once doing research it's like a pyramid scheme mm-hmm. there's like you know all these and there's a lot of these fucking things out there so i think that's also another thing some people might just see all that money and they're like dude there's no way this is legit there's no way this is real there's it's got to be a pyramid scheme but I, I know for myself i did the research i know that it, it, like i said it is completely legal i've seen a bunch of people that, that have made consistent money on it my only concern was just do I really want to go 100% in? You and, should. And I, I, you know, should. I know that at, with my mentality, I can do it. You. <clears throat> it's just, I'm, I'm just like, I, it's a, it's a huge, and, and that's like, it's kind of crazy, you know, because like, I'm thinking about like, how much I could really like, just free myself up free dumb yeah. yeah freedom yeah and and it, it's just it, it's it's kind of like i don't know it's kind of that was one thing for me was like a little bit of like fear and anxiety of like damn like i have this job i have this like potential career you know what i'm saying it's doing well i'm getting paid well good insurance all the fucking all that okay so imagine making what you make in a year in a month right how, how much you know is that enough to convince you right yeah is that or no it, it's still for myself again it even if you stopped after a month, you right. could, you've you already made your annual income. So what do you, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? What are you right. going to do? Like, you can't reinvent the wheel. Like, right, right. you know what I mean? Like, it's there. Yeah. It's there. I don't, it's, it's, I mean, it's a good, it's definitely something that, like, I've, I've thought about in the past. That was just my only, like, drawback. Yeah. It, it, it's, I know it's 100% fear. That's all it is. It's just 100% fear. And it's like. Damn, like with I everything that you don't know is fear. Right, exactly. So exactly. same with me. I was just like, I like numbers, but like charts, and I'm just like, right. that was very intimidating. But then as soon as like I was diving in, it was just like, it's pleasurable. Like right. now I'm having like withdrawals because the market's <laughs> closed, and I just right. can't wait for Sunday afternoon to like see the numbers moving again because like everybody dreads Mondays. I I. Just, can't wait for Sunday, Sunday afternoon, waiting for, you know, Monday. That's the real session is Monday morning. Mm. I just can't wait for Mondays. Yeah. Every day is a great day. Every day is Friday. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. every day is Friday. That's a life right there, bro. <laughs> I think you, you sold me. You could do it. You could do it. <laughs> no, I, the thing I'm is, I know you, I can. You, you can. Just, I'm just Trust like me, feared. I have yeah. people in my group that, that, didn't know what like take profit i'm like right. okay take pro like and they're showing me screenshots of like what they would have like made in like two months in a week mm. and they're just like thank you right you know like right. that's what i want that's i want to see everybody win like if you guys don't believe it like i really do like i want to see you win i want to see you win like you already know based on my energy andrew that you know 
I want to see Juice Revolution win, like, so bad. Like, I'm rooting, mm-hmm. and I'm constantly giving you ideas and helping you with your social media. Like, I, I just generally want to see people win, and, yeah. like... Everybody's so used to like fake, right, you know what right. I mean? That like when something real, they're just like, they just, they don't give it credit. You know what I mean? Like it's hard. It's hard for them to like, you know, touch it and absorb something real because they're like, they're in a fake world. So used to, yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Shit's deep. <laughs> you sold Drew or what? Huh? I think I'm sold, brother. He's already uh, working. It's week week two already. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've been working. Yeah, out I know. Here. I gotta, and, and just I, I I see. Also, this is what I, this is another thing that I like about it. There's nobody that works as hard as I work. Right. That's the way that I think. Oh yeah, you do multitasking. Okay. So yeah. for if if he can do it, right, right, anybody can. Well, do it's it. like it, it's like. It's one of those things where you don't need you don't need to rely on anyone. You oh. you are your own boss. Right. And this is gonna sound like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah. right you know what I'm saying? But look, people piss me off. Right. I don't like fucking working with people because nobody works as good as, as I think they should. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Everybody fucking lets me down. Mm. Right. But in this world, I can work as hard as I want to work for the results that I want to see. Right. It's it's one of those you know. It's a performance based thing. Right. You know, right. which which people with our mindset and mentality, you know, thrive in that type of uh, atmosphere, I guess you could say. Yeah. So that, that's another reason why I like it. Um, so uh tell we've been we've been vibing out. We're 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 at an hour. Um so we're gonna get we're gonna get close to wrapping it up here, but I wanted to hit on um a few things real quick, just a few minutes, right? Truth seeker, holistic medicine, and you're also vegan. That's right. Ooh. Right. So I want to just have a quick little conversation on that. Truth seeker, holistic medicine, and vegan. Give us the rundown. <laughs> All right. Uh, truth seeking. Um, I'm just. I'm really after the truth of like the shape of the earth. Mm. Um, I don't like the fact that NASA is and continuing, you know, to manipulate how the Earth is not important how we're not important the earth is the center of the universe we're the most important planet out there everything revolves around us and we don't spin and basically the earth is a cell um another part of my truth seeking um let's get a little controversy over here but um (laughs) Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Um, and we'll just no. I don't want to talk about that, especially if this is going to be publicated. You know. What okay. I mean? So move on to holistic medicine. Holistic and your, medicine your habits. All right. Uh, holistic medicine. Um, I started with basically healing mm-hmm. uh, my family. Okay. Now my mother and father they have uh, you know they had health issues. Mm-hmm. My father high high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Uh, he had vertigo. My mom, um, same thing. She had my father was also pre-diabetic, so basically, what I I went on and did a lot of research on like herbs, natural remedies, and I completely got them to not take any kind of prescription medicine. They've been to the doctor, they did all their blood work, and basically, they said like, "Hey, you're good. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want to, you can go ahead and um, take maintenance." pills like low dosages if you want to but you're good like got my father off of high blood pressure cholesterol wow and he had vertigo as well now what i did was um i completely turned them vegan um i went into their kitchen and i went through their cabinets and i pulled out everything that had chemicals in it Mm. anything that was highly processed uh dairy uh, uh butter uh, any kind of meat, any kind of animal I brought by a product, I, I stripped it away and they're Italian. So like they love their meats and stuff right. like salami. Who, if I tell an Italian person, <laughs> stop eating salami or prosciutto, they're going to shoot me. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I was able to help them out and, um, slowly, you know, I'm helping other, you know, people reaching mm-hmm. out in, um, my family and helping close friends with, um, little personal problems that they have with their body, Mm -hmm. uh, illnesses and so forth, like uh, bone pain, back pains. um, And basically, um, what I do is I brew different herbs. Okay. And these herbs, they 
they basically heal you. I don't want to say it because, you know, any anytime you say healing or right, cure, right. You, that's when you get into the, the zone of where, like, you know, I go missing or something. But <laughs> you know what I mean? But right. <laughs> I don't want to ever emphasize the fact of, like, you know, my holistic healing powers that I have. Like, Andrew didn't know about that. But, like, I do. And, like, I vibe with energy. And, like, I'm all about energy. And I can feel it, like, without even, like, talking to somebody and i can tell you everything almost everything about you and how everything's gonna play out if you're gonna stay by my side or you're just gonna like just you know just walk through hmm. that's interesting um and then let's go down to the vegan part mm-hmm. so i'm a 200 pound vegan i'm healthy and don't eat any meat and i get my protein from you know vegetables and fruits mm-hmm. and that's it when did you transition to or how long have you been vegan? Uh, about two years. Two years. Cool. Before that, I was uh, just a pescatarian. Mm. Didn't have any, you know, meat as far as like chicken, pork, uh, or beef. It was just seafood. Seafood. Because yeah. I love sushi, but then I found out what's in sushi and yeah. raw fish. I was mm-hmm. like, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. I cut, cut that it, off. Cut everything out. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. That all those things are very intertwined i i want to say yeah. so the healing you know even even slide back to the forex you know the freedom with the life you know the choices you make with your body the food choices you know all these things that you're doing you're freeing up your time you're being healthy you want to you want to prolong your life yes. you know all this stuff you want to live a long happy healthy life and, and and everything that we talked about is uh is intertwined and i think it's really awesome so Christian, drop that Nimbus Cloud beat. Nimbus Cloud. Ooh! All right, so um, yeah, we got to shout out AC Delgado for the yeah. for the beat on the intro um, and this beat that you're hearing right now. Thank you so much for that. Um, the episode is brought to you in part by D Squared Media. Again, D Squared Media um, is a uh, local small business that specializes in web design, graphic design business branding um, anything you're needing help with for branding your business you can reach out to them and uh, throughout the holidays they're doing a hundred dollar gift card giveaway for the refer e and the referral of a website Ooh, so if you need know someone who needs a website you refer them to danny and his team at d squared you're going to get a hundred dollar gift card and so is wow. the person so normally you know the deal is if you need some work done, you go to them, get 10% off your total invoice. But now anybody who's listening can make money if they refer people to Danny and his team who need a website. So it's as simple as that. Um, so, Giovanni, um, leave. Uh, I want to thank you. First off, thank you yeah, for thank coming you. out and uh, sharing my your, a little bit um, about you with everyone. It was incredible. And um, I want you to just go ahead and just leave the listeners with something to uh, think about on this upcoming week because you know it's going to be sunday night when this episode airs so give a listener something to get their week set off properly um i would say just focus and put your energy into one thing instead of dividing your energy into a lot of things so then you get more of a uh, an item or a product of substance Mm -hmm. um and just if you don't like what you're doing right now you have you have a chance to change like it's never too late and we have this brain it's it's for learning so like never stop learning if you stop learning you just you're dying you need to use what has been given to you like the creator of our body and mind he didn't make a mistake like He engineered us perfect, okay? So if you believe it, and it sounds cliche, but it'll happen. Like, change your mind and you'll change your outcome. Like, it's very, very important that you stay positive. You stay, you have to envision yourself. Like, I didn't envision, I, I was scared to make a lot of money. I was scared to it because I knew that I couldn't make it because everything that I did believe happened. It was crazy. It was everything that I believe happened. So whatever you believe, it's going to happen. So just change your mind frame and you'll change that outcome. I promise you. I promise you. All right, everybody. You heard it here first, baby. (laughs) Uh, Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.